So this video is not going the way that I planned on it. Of course, Tulip is chewing on her antler back there as soon as I start recording. So we're just gonna hear some puppy chewing noises occasionally. It's all good. But it is time to announce the pre-order of a new plushie. It's my first tarantula plushie too. So yeah, I don't know how long you've been around, but the first one we did was Wednesday. There's the tag, only 949 made, tarantula cat. This one was my velvet spider Wednesday, which I know you guys keep asking if she will come back because these campaigns are limited edition. You pre-order, they ship out, and then it's done. They're not like available all the time. I know you guys are asking, can she come back? Will she come back? I have an idea in my head, but I think it's gonna be really dependent on how the next campaigns go. And since you guys loved the Wednesday plushie, I did go make a pumpkin plushie afterwards. She had the metallic chellis array, and then this one actually came with a detachable gummy worm. 1,042, which is crazy. That's even more than the Wednesday one. Also not available anymore. So here we go with round three and if you're already on patreon or a subscriber on instagram then you already know the deal you already have seen the plushie i unboxed early for you guys and i've walked you guys along the process like the whole time before i show the plushie and give you guys some details i did want to say really quick thanks to your guys support on the wednesday and pumpkin plushie campaigns last year i actually won this 2022 playback pet fan favorite award from the company who does this with me makeshift so thank you so much but okay 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 i know you guys are ready for the plushie reveal. I've already shown it on Instagram, cross-posted it to Facebook. You guys know if you follow me on those platforms, but here it is. It is a T. Celadonia. This one also comes with a little detachable gummy worm or hornworm. I just think that it needs to happen with all of my future plushies because that is kind of like a trademark to my channel. It's the kind of content that really helped me build my channel. So I just feel like it's important to include the little gummy worms. But here it is. Of course we have the eye pattern, which is the same eye pattern. That's like most important for me. Velvet spiders, jumping spiders, and tarantulas all have different eye patterns. And that is a great way to tell different species of spiders a Part. So it's just really important that we get it right and I think they did a great job while still making it a cute plushie Which is also really important to me as you see we've got the coloring awesome. They did an amazing job This is embroidered on of course. It's really soft. That's another important thing and yeah So if you want to get one you have 21 days from now So today I'm posting this January 19th 2023 you have 21 days to pre-order one of these and then once the campaign ends they will manufacture them all send them out to you and that's it they're not going to be for sale again it is a limited edition campaign I wanted to make a tea Saladonia plush because first of all, it's probably one of the most beautiful kinds of tarantulas. It's also really similar to jumping spiders. I just really think that if you keep jumping spiders, you probably also love tea Saladonia. It's just a really unique kind of tarantula. And unfortunately, they're not the easiest to find, afford, and even in some cases keep alive. Yeah, if you guys want to get one, I have it linked down below. I'm going to have people ask me for months and possibly years afterwards, where can I get that T. Saldonia plush? And I'm going to have to be like, 
It's gone. It's gone. I can't. So now let's talk about the real life pixie because I have some really unfortunate news. So this video is not going the way that I planned on it. I planned on, you know, showing you guys the plushie and then giving you guys a good update on my T Celadonias and also rehousing Pixie because Pixie, she was in this little sling container, which is great, but I was going to rehouse her because since I've gotten her and put her in that, she had molted a few times and I wanted to rehouse her into one of these, which is my favorite enclosure. And check it out. I actually have a velvet spider that is out right now. What are you doing out? Oh my goodness, that's awesome. My velvet spiders almost never come out. This one is a Rufa Capolis, the Rufa Capolis. So cute, I love these enclosures. These are like my favorite sling enclosures. And no, I'm not just saying that because I'm an affiliate. I genuinely love these. This is the sling enclosure that Pixie was in. And this is the kind that I was going to rehouse her to just because they are absolutely adorable and a little bit roomier and literally perfect. I, I love it. But unfortunately, like Fern, one day before I'm filming this, one one day before I am filming the so so let me back up. When I started working on the T Celadonia plushie, it was around the time that I had just got two T Celadonia slings gifted to me from my dear friend Amy at Fan Cup Tarantulas. I was so happy about having them in my collection finally, and I was really like, I had a positive outlook. I thought it was gonna go good. So when we first started working on the Pixie plushie, I didn't know if it was gonna be Fern or Pixie yet. I just knew it was gonna be a T Celadonia plush, and I figured we will like kind of figure it out later. But I was leaning more towards Pixie because Pixie is just like an adorable, perfect name for a T Celadonia. I feel like they're like little fairy type Pokemon and they just, it's a perfect name, okay? So while we're still in the planning phases of this campaign, unfortunately Fern, the sibling T Celadonia, died in a molt. So it looks like she molted and her abdomen got stuck and then she just died. And I felt like that was probably because there just wasn't enough room for her to molt in her little hole that she made. It's like the enclosure was big enough and like fine. It's just like the little area, the little space that it had tried to molt, it just seemed a little cramped. And so she got stuck in her molt and died, which I thought was kind of like a freak thing. But just to be on the safe side, I used to keep my T Celadonia out here with the jumping spiders. Since it's by the window and it gets a little chilly now, I've been using a little space heater to keep it warmer in this corner. Unfortunately, that also causes enclosures to dry out a little bit faster and I didn't want to risk like dehydration or anything like that. So I moved Pixie into the bedroom with the rest of the tarantulas. Now, during all of this, I remember being really upset about losing Fern and saying, you know, I thought I had done everything right. You know, it just, it sucks. And so Tom Patterson ended up sending me another T Celadonia. And he told me that this one is a little bit larger. It's going to be less fragile than the tiny slings that I had been raising and I would probably have better luck. Just basically like giving it to me not to get discouraged about my loss. One day before filming this video, I found Pixie dead. So as you can see, Pixie had grown and she was doing really well. I have like some videos on Instagram of her just being awesome and walking around. Not even a few days before finding her dead, I had a friend over and I was showing my friend. I didn't pull her out of her hide or anything. She was in her hide, but like I could see that she was okay and she was moving in it. And then literally yesterday I was preparing to film this video and I look and I noticed that she's not in her little hide. Now this was her little hide as you see that was her trap door. This was her trap door and it would just pop open and she would come in and out. So she had opened her trap door and I found her dead on the ground. So I immediately panicked and I was like, oh my God, cancel the video, cancel the plushie. Both the T Celadonia slings that I had based this plushie off of have passed away. But what I've decided to do is recycle the name Pixie. And I know some of you may be like, that's stupid, but I just really love the name Pixie for a T Celadonia. I just feel like it's really fitting. And this Celadonia that Tom gave me, I actually haven't named her yet. So I just think that it'd be really cool to recycle the name Pixie, Pixie 2.0. She has also made a little hide and you can see in pretty well. I like that she made her hide right there on that spot, but it does make it a little hard to open this enclosure. I didn't think this through because it does open in the middle, but I am able to just crack it open. I just crack it open ever so slightly like this. And that's how I drop in crickets and mist and it's really no problem, but, and I am just crossing my fingers that she continues to do okay. Now, little slings have more of a tendency 
to just randomly die. That's why slings tend to be much cheaper than adult specimens and all of that. There's just a certain amount of slings that aren't destined to make it. And I've talked to my friends who have bred T. Celadonia, raised T. Celadonia, and they all seem to say that I was just really unlucky. A couple of them offered to even send me another T. Celadonia to make me feel better, but honestly, I think I'm just gonna stick to this larger one that Tom gave me and see how we can grow this pixie out. And as long as we can keep this pixie alive for a significant amount of time, hopefully into adulthood and beyond, then I will consider getting another T. Celadonia sling. But for now, I have one. I don't need to be greedy. One is enough. And then I also have another pixie that's much more cuddly and I don't have to worry about finding it and death curl a day before I'm supposed to film an update on it. <laughs> Please don't let this discourage you though from getting the species if you want it and it's available and you can afford it. Do not let my experience keep you from trying. I know they're a little pricey. I would suggest keeping an Avicularia sling first or a Caribbean Aversi color before doing a T. Celadonia just to practice because the care is almost exactly the same across the board. And I've had success growing Caribbean Aversi color. I mean, Bon Bon, I have grown from a teeny tiny sling and I've never had an issue, never seen her in death curl, never had a problem. And I was taking care of the Celadonia in the same way, but sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes there's just a problem you can't see or it happens without warning. So um, again, really hoping that this one does better. Again, she is much larger, which means more hardy, more likely to survive long term. So anyway, that is my update. Send me good vibes for Pixie 2.0. I really don't want anything to happen to her because I really, really love this species and I really want an adult. I want to show an adult on my channel. I want to film her. I want to take pictures of her because they're absolutely gorgeous. They are the arachnophobes tarantula of choice. They're perfect for showing people afraid of tarantulas, how beautiful that they can be. And I really just want the opportunity to, to actually grow one out. That's Bowser. <laughs> like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not. And you don't forget I made a screen news probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a teespring. It is all linked down below. I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks. What are you? <laughs> what are you doing?